Let's bow for a word of prayer. Father God, we come to you this morning giving you praise and adoration. We thank you, God, for who you are. We ask you right now to bless this class that you may be glorified in it. Hide me behind the cross of Calvary. I pray, Lord God, that your word will be, be raised up. God, we thank you for all that you're doing for us and with us. We ask you to bless the church, Lord God. We pray right now that, God, that you will be glorified in everything that we do and say in this building. So we give all this to your hands because this is your church. This is your time. We are your people. We are your servants. And we thank you that it's like that because you set it up that way. This we pray in the name of Jesus, our Savior, Lord, this all say amen. 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 Now, um, before I begin, I want to say happy Father's Day. Um, to everyone because some um, women have stepped up uh, because of situations of, of um, you know, with, because of home-like things of that nature. So that's why I say happy Father's Day to all. Um, also, um, and I'm not saying you should look at it, but there was something I, I happened to come across as I was going through YouTube and all that kind of stuff, not YouTube, wherever it was, Yahoo, wherever it was. But anyway, there was something that came up, and this gentleman, the young man, was speaking about fathers. So I clicked onto it, and he was—he had some choice words for men, especially those that um, have children all over the world and, and not raising them. I mean, he was very, very, very um, choice with his words, and so um, it was interesting to hear his thoughts on that. Um, I want to. Uh, again, on that note, um, pause and give, even though he cannot hear me, he's no longer here. But I would just like to thank my dad uh, for raising me to be a man. Um, as, you, we, as I talked to you last week about my dad, uh, he was a no-nonsense person. And after he dedicated his life back to the Lord, it was a whole different person. I mean, he calmed out, was totally different than what he was. But he gave me a sense of security and also gave me a sense of being. Um, in my, well, let me put it this way. With me and my brother, our last name was Van Loon, and he put pride into that name. And so, even with this arthritis that I am experiencing, you know, I'm able to talk it through. I'm a van known. I can, you know, now sometimes it works, sometimes I don't. But, but still at all, it gives me the, the strength of being able to try to keep going. And so again, I went, if he was here, I would not thank him for being my dad, for raising me. Um, when he was raising me, I did not understand him. And now that I've gotten older, I understand him. And, and um, so if, I, if he was here right now, I would make him stand up and I would just probably say thank you to him. So again, uh, on that note. So going with our book. Now, I just want to uh, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All in, all in. Now, um, the, the thing I want to make sure of before I begin, if you have any questions, if you don't agree with what I'm saying, if you, whatever, please raise your hand, please do input, okay? Because um, my wife and I disagree, but we love each other. And the thing about it is, is that, you know, just because you disagree with somebody doesn't mean that you're their, you're their enemy and nothing like that. And so my wife doesn't agree with last I do. And so I don't agree with some of the things. <laughs> I ain't going to say some of that. And so okay. don't make go back and tell her and I'll be in trouble. So, <laughs> but, uh, but again, you know, we, we uh, survived together and I thank her. And, and again, uh, just to give her accolades, if uh, I thank God for her because if she did not, because of my arthritis, I would not be able to be here in this church. Not saying I didn't want to be. I could not be physically here. And if I came, you would actually go home because I would not be dressed properly. 
So again, I, and I'm not talking about me, I'm just talking about she really helps me out uh, with my arthritis. So, and she goes over and beyond, and I, I really appreciate that because this, this arthritis has humbled me and helped me to understand what people who are handicapped go through, especially if they don't have someone to help them out. So it's, it's, it's really a, a, a learning situation. Now going on with our lesson, in order, we, I talked about um, the young lady I was telling you about uh, last week. Now I just want to, I didn't say and I want to say this, is that um, with the Bible and with therapy, she was able to deal with her past situation that she experienced when she was growing up. And so again, with therapy, and therapy is important because you need someone that's professional to help you deal with those type of issues. Okay, so to, in order to move forward, again, she had to deal with her past with the Bible and therapy, as I said. And now I agree with Mr. Scazzaro when he writes on page 71, the blessings and sins of our families going back two to three generations yes. profoundly impact who we are today, okay? And the thing about it is, is that it's very important because a lot of times people don't understand each other until they find out how they were raised because especially even when you're, um, that's an old fashioned term, courting, that's an old fashioned term. But when you're getting to know someone, let me put, that, let me, let me put it this way. When I started uh, dating my wife, I had to understand her background. And it gave me a better appreciation of who she is. Okay, so again, a lot of things that have happened, either blessings and sins uh, that happened in the family. I know when I was growing up, there was a terminology that was used in my household, which stays, what goes on in here stays in here. And so that was the rule that whatever went on, and that is good and it's also bad. Because if there's um, turmoil in the house and people are getting beaten, I mean, immersed in things of that nature, there should be uh, something that somebody needs to be alert to that. So again, but that was like an old, old yep. cliche yep. that uh, people used yep. uh, back in those days. So again, the blessings and sins of our families going back two to three generations profoundly impact who we are today. And two, discipleship requires putting off the simple patterns of our family of origin and relearning how to do life God's way in God's family. Yep. God's way is totally different from the way we were raised. Right. Totally different. Amen. Okay. Um, and the thing about it is, is that sometimes some people have to relearn yes. as far as things of what the Bible teaches than yes. what you were taught when you were growing up. Yes. Okay, Can anybody wants to give me an illustration, anybody wants to say anything, I mean you have to disclose anything, but I'm just saying if you have, and also I just want to say this, is that um, I've noticed that which I really don't look at myself because I'm very critical of myself, but someone has told me that when uh, you look at or on YouTube or whatever, there's a blank spot. So if you ask questions, I'm going to have to repeat it uh, because we're not able to uh, talk to uh, Sister Kristen. She was talking about the microphone. And so if you ask a question, I may have to repeat it. So those that are listening in on YouTube can understand what you asked. Okay, so I'm just letting you know that, yes. Yeah, I think in general, uh Illustration of what you're requesting is uh, the Bible. I forget the reference says that the father is responsible to raise the children. Yeah. But almost without exception, in our culture, uh, it's the mother who raises the children. Right. Right. And, and and you're right. The father is supposed to raise the children, but the mother. Now, the the one thing I have to say, in all fairness, in all fairness, is that mothers have the advantage. I'm going to tell you why. And it, you usually see the child, I know with me, I was really close to my mom. Now, why was that? Because the child is in the mother. And there is, uh, and it's scientifically um, uh, based, is that the mother feeds the child and the child knows the mother before it knows the father. The father sees the baby when it comes out, but the mother is the one that's dealing with the child 
And so there's a close relationship between mother and child because that relationship is linked in. So there is a dependency a lot of times on the mother than on the dad because again, because that's what the child knows. You ever know that um, when these sports, the guys come and say, hey mom, you know, <laughs> you know where's dad at? Well, a lot of times, you know, they, it's because mom, you know, mom has been that, that mom is the foundation. Okay, and I'll just say that to be honest. Mom is the foundation. Dad is the disciplinarian. Mom is the foundation. It looks like everything revolves around mom. And so that's, that's critical of, of knowing that. So that, that's another thing. But what you're saying is dads do sure raise their, um, their children, but a lot of times mothers uh, step in and do the raising, which is, you know, sometimes bad, good. Whatever way, it all depends upon the individual. Now, what do you think about the above statements of Mr. Cazaro? What is your feelings about what he said in this book on page 71? Where's your feelings? I'll have to say that um, I totally agree with, with that because um, it's you know, because the generation of our fathers, the, the sense of our father does transit through generations. Right. And um, and if you can look, take some of it, like in, in my family, on my father's side, alcoholism runs rapid. Mm -hmm. So it was a saying growing up, as we was kids, I don't want to get started on that because it was, right. it was, that was the thing, generational. And then when I really learned about generational curses and the sins of the father, when I really learned, over my kids, when my kids was little, I had to plead the blood and begin to denounce those things that I knew that was in my family history. Right, right. You know what I mean? So I, even though I believe, even though that is true, but we we as believers have to come to a place in Christ when you recognize it and begin to stop it because it don't have to keep me exactly. from exactly. generation to generation to generation. Exactly, exactly. Right. And, and, and matter of fact, that's the, the point that you just said, I had to deal with yesterday. Um, my brother's son, who lives in Syracuse, and I tell you, it sometimes scares me to talk to this boy because he, he sounds just like my brother, he laughs like my brother, and it's like, and I told him, man, every time I talk to you, you sound like my, you know, your dad. I mean, it's like, it's scary, you know? But my dad and my brother did not believe in going to the doctors. I'm just going to put it out there. The cancer that I've had and been treated for, the prostate cancer that I had and been treated for, if I had known that ran in my family, then I would be able to, you know, but because of their self-medication, and it went down, and so they believed that they didn't believe in that, and, and I had to talk to my nephew because he has the same mindset. I said, boy, you better get to the doctor. So his wife is making him go, which I'm thankful that she is. But the thing about it is that they have this macho attitude. I ain't going to the doctor. I'm good. And yeah, okay, you're good until you get in the hospital. You see all that bill. <laughs> you see <laughs> that $5,000 bill that you can't pay. You know? But um, so again, is that you're right. It, it's the background, the family background uh, needs to be broken in those instances. It needs to be broken. And Amen. Even in the hospital, they, they ask, did your mom die for this? Like, right. they, even the medical will recognize that things are passed down from you. Exactly. 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 You know, I got in, in a large heart. I got, um, you know, I got, I got heart disease in my family. So, you know, I'm on all this type of medication because of that. You know, and again, is that my dad died of a heart attack. You know, and so, and then my brother had um, heart problems also, you know. So, like I said, it's good to know these things in the beforehand. So, now, what do you, again, you already gave your opinion. Anybody has any other opinion that they want to give before we move on? Anyone else? Okay. So, some of what we do in our lives is learned behavior. Some of what we do in our lives is learned behavior, okay? Like for instance, boys don't cry. And so a guy, cause he's taught not to cry, okay? But then now it's 
acceptable. But when I was growing up, I got beat up so many times by my uncles. Boy, you better not be crying. <laughs> you know, you know who you, you know, and so you, you got to. I'm, I'm okay. I'm, you know, but meanwhile, you know, you want to get it out, but because the way you were raised, you know, boys don't cry, and so you know, so I was raised. Don't you better not be crying. You know, only girls cry. You ain't gonna. Cry. So, so you know, but that, that again, I had to break that. I had to break that cycle. And to break that cycle. Yes. Yeah, I think uh, the more uh, a man is more of a man when he cries, because he's right. dealing with his emotions. Mm -hmm. Trying to be something that you're not, and you're not dealing with. Eventually, it'll catch up with you. Either have a breakdown, or you deal with your emotions, and that goes for everyone. Right. So exactly. I think we all have to deal with our emotions. You're feeling a certain way. Like some people come up to you and say, "How you doing?" You'll say, "How you doing?" Oh, I'm all right. You better right. say, "I'm doing fine," because you're alive. Mm -hmm. You know things like that. And I had to get out of that habit. I just mm -hmm. say, "I'm all right." But instead of being, now I understand, but beforehand I would just say, I'm all right, because there's things you used to do. Right. You know. But the thing about it is, if you're truthful, it's like a lot of men came to me, and the Lord really put on my heart, because I was not going to tell anyone that I prosecuted. I was not going to tell no one. And the Lord put on my heart, and the way that they found it was that because of my back and my knees was hurting, I went to the VA and they did um, exam and they and they saw something and 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 so I went so let me go to my primary physician you know and I went to my primary physician and then I was diagnosed with prostate cancer but because but the Lord because I was not and I kept putting tests off I'll go next month next week I'll go next month next month, I'll go next month I'll go at the end of the year I'll go the first of the year. And the thing about it is, so my knees, my back hurt me so bad that I had to go to the doctors, mm -hmm. and that's how I was diagnosed with that. But again, is that a lot of times, if a lot of men have come up to me afterwards, after I revealed that, and really confided in me about what they're going through, and I was able to help them to understand and also tell them what they need to look for in radiation, what they need to look for in surgery and things of that nature. You know, because now that I've been through radiation, I know all the steps you gotta take, you know, to, to do that. So again, you know, it's sometimes you need your eyes look, I'm not feeling well. And, you know. You know, somebody said, What's wrong? You know, you know. But again, that's when you know people very well where you can you know talk about that. Yes, okay, nobody else. Okay. Now, the power of the family. The word family in the Bible is translated as one Okios, okios, it signifies a dwelling, a house, a household family in 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 4. And it reads, but if any widow have children or nephews, let them learn first to show piety at home and to requite their parents, for that is good and acceptable before God. In the King James Version, piety means reverence. Okay, requite also means in the definition of the Greek word means recompense to return in kind. So again, is that the if you look at that verse, you put those words in there. If, but if any widow have children or nephews, let them learn first to show piety or reverence at home, and to requite their parents means to recompense uh, uh, to return in kind to their parents, for that is good and acceptable before God. And a lot of times we're so busy taking care of everybody else that we don't know how to take care of home. Mm, amen. Okay, and, and the thing about it is a lot of times we're so busy doing things for everybody else, but there are people at our home is suffering. Mm. Okay, so again, so that, that's very important in the scripture. Uh, Petera, an ancestry literature signifies in the New Testament a family or tribe as found in Exodus chapter 12 verse 3. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. <coughs> Numbers 32, 28. So concerning them, Moses commanded Eleazar the priest, and Joshua the son of Nun, and the chief fathers of the tribes of the children of Israel. Okay, again, we'll talk about family. we we'll talk about family. It is used also, um, uh, it is used of the family of David, Luke chapter 2, verse 4. You all right? You want some water? 
I'm okay. Just keep talking. Okay. All right. All right. Then make sure you're okay. Thank okay. You. You're welcome. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. Again, we talk about family. So again, you see the usages of family in the Bible. In the wider sense of nationalities and races can be found in Acts chapter 3, verse 25. Ye are the children of the prophets, and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, and in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Also in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 15, families, kindreds, every family, the whole family, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. The reference, the reference, the reference, excuse me, being to all those who are spiritually related to God, the Father, he being the author of their spiritual relation to him as his children, they being united to one another in family fellowship. Patria is akin to Peter, a father. So again, as you saw, see in the scriptures, family is represented a lot in the scriptures, okay? Now again, we are the family, we are a family as far as relationship because we're related. You know we're related? How are we related? Amen. Say again? By the Holy Spirit. Through Christ. Okay, yes. Yeah. The blood of the Lamb. Jesus. That's how we're related. Okay. Without Jesus, we would not be related. Because of Jesus, we're related. Yes, ma'am. Okay, go ahead. The whole world is related through Eve. Okay, say it again. The whole world is related through Eve. That's Eve. why okay. God always calls us brethren. Okay. Your brother, whether he's from your culture or another culture, we all have gotten our original DNA from Adam and Eve. Therefore, everybody on this planet is related. All right, I agree with that, and I stand corrected. Thank you. See, you can disagree with me, and that's all right. <laughs> I appreciate that. But she's right. We're related to Eve, Adam and Eve, as far as it's concerned. So, yes, you're right on that. Okay, anybody else? Yes. Uh, Acts 17.26 says... Acts 17.26. All the families of the earth are of one blood. Right. And then Deuteronomy 32.8, I think it is, says that boundaries of the nations have been determined by God in relation to the needs of Israel. Okay. Deuteronomy 32, 8. Just and so, and like I said, I repeat this, so those that are listening on YouTube or whatever, they kind of understand so they won't be lost as far as what's going on. Yes, anyone else? I think how we teach it is that you both are correct right. and that he's um, we are all God's children by creation. Right. Right. But you do have to be born again of the Spirit to be in the family of God. Right. And Nicodemus. Okay, Nicodemus. All right, thank you, thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else? See, we're learning, we're learning, we're learning. I don't have all the answers. Believe me, I have all the answers. I never said I had all the answers. Believe me. Amen. The only thing that is correct is this. And I dropped the Bible. So I get it. I'll, I'll get it. The only thing that's correct is the Bible. Okay? Thank you, sir. See, I tell you, when you got arthritis, boy, you know, you know, um, I used to laugh at the older, older people. When they come around the cage, I used to laugh at them. Now I'm one of them. <laughs> it's, not, it's not really good. You got to be careful who you laugh at. <clears throat> okay. On page 73 of the book, Mr. Casaro uh, states, while we are affected by powerful external events and circumstances through our earthly lives, our families are the most powerful group to which we were, which we will ever belong. Even those who left home as young adults, determined to break from their family histories, soon find that their family's way of doing life follows them wherever they go. You ever notice that, that, you know, especially when you're going out, I ain't going to do that to my kids. And you find that you're doing the same thing. <laughs> you, <laughs> you know, you know. And, and, oh, they're too hard. I ain't going to be like that to my kids. And then sometimes the kids when you're nervous, you shut up, sit down, sit down. <laughs> I, I remember when I used to be a kid and running around, she said, look, 
You need to take a nap, lay down, do something. Just do this. <laughs> You know, so what happens in one generation often repeats itself in the next. Okay, again, learned behavior. The consequence of actions and decisions taken in one generation affect those who follow. Okay, in the Bible, you notice how God deals with sin and what He tells them to do as far as family lineage and things of that nature. And so again, because a lot of times, like he said in the book, our families are very, very powerful. And so the things that we have learned, even though we don't think it's right, we find ourselves doing because that's the way we were brought up, okay? Um, I, I have an issue, I have a strong issue. Um, I saw it on on TV, wherever I saw that. Um, mothers painting their son's fingernails and toenails pink and all that kind of stuff. You know, they don't be who they want to be. You know, they, they can decide for themselves. You know, and, and I take issue to that, you know, but that's the world we're living in now. You know, and so again, um, you know, the, the the consequence of action decisions taken one generation affect those who follow it. Looking at Exodus chapter 20, verse 4 through 6, thou shalt not make any, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is the earth beneath, and that is the water under the, earth, under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy to thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. God is a holy God, He's a just God, and sometimes we make Him as the little happy guy sitting up in the thing, excuse anything we do. You know, and the thing about it is, is the sometimes the church is a false representation of God because they want him to be that happy old man sitting in the rocking chair saying, it'll be all right, even though you're you know, killing everybody, you know, it'll be okay. And so again, is that uh, we need to make sure that we are presenting God in his, his true form, okay? God, in the giving of the Ten Commandments, connected this reality to the very nature of who he is. God repeated the same truth again when Moses asked to see God's glory, Exodus chapter 34, 67. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, upon the children's children, unto the third and to the fourth generation. Amen. Thus is the word of God. Now, anyone got any other, that they got anything they want to say at this point? Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's so encouraging to know that the Lord has the last word. Amen. Even though we may have been raised uh, under adversity and suffered many things in our earthly families uh, the Lord has the last word and and his purposes are going to are going to prevail ultimately now when we look at the family of Joseph Joseph came from a family where there were four different mothers mm -hmm. well that's tailor-made mm -hmm. for, for chaos and, and uh, confusion and, and yet, while the brothers sent him, or while the brothers sold him right. into Egypt for slavery, God says, I think it's in Genesis 50, that, that God sent him there to preserve life, even, yeah. even the life of his own oh, that's right. family. Yeah. No? And, and, and sometimes, and this is why I'm going to say this, and I say this to a lot of people, and, and I'm going to just leave, leave, I'm going to say this, I'm going to just leave it where it is. A lot of times we go through things 
And you say, oh, the devil, you know, the devil, whatever. You know, sometimes when we pray and ask God, God, use me. God's not going to say, well, how do you want to be used? God's not going to answer that question. He's not going to ask, okay, um, what do you want to be used as? He's not going to do that. A lot of things that we go through, we go through for a reason, to be able to understand other people, okay? Understand what they're going through. The death of my son helped me to realize things are not as important as we make it to be. We put so much in the I gotta go to work, gotta do this, gotta make people, gotta pay people, gotta. And sometimes we just gotta slow down and say, no, I thank God. I got a roof over my head. He had my rent on my mortgage is high, but thank God I'm able to pay it. The gas is getting high, but thank God I'm able to put gas in my car. I may not go that far, but thank God I got gas. Right. You know. But again, we always you know, we you know, you know, the devil in, 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 and sometimes, again, we need to pause and say to the Lord, okay, Lord, what are you trying to teach me? What are you trying to show me? And sometimes there's things in our own life that God wants to point out to us. And sometimes we have to go through things to help to understand what other people are feeling. You know, no one could minister to me if they never lost a child. And that may sound crude, but it's not. Because you don't understand. You don't understand the grief. No one can understand the loss of a, of a wife or a child or anything like I mean, of a, of a wife or a husband or you know, a brother, whatever. When you go through that, there, there's something that you go through. And so what happens is that you're able to minister to someone else, but I can't do it. So I got all the education, all whatever, but see the sensitivity of the person of being able to sit with a person you know, you know, and help them through this because they're going through crisis. They're going through somebody, they need somebody to understand where they're at. They don't need somebody to take the Bible and hit them on the head and quote scripture to them. They don't need that. They need some I'm listening here that they can that somebody can empathize, excuse me, empathize with them. Yeah, you the, the Spirit of God would give you words to say, but sometimes the Spirit of God would say, keep your mouth shut. Keep your mouth shut. They need just to feel your presence in the room. So a lot of times we go through situations. Is it help us to be strong? And there's something that I went through years ago that made me stronger. It made me stronger. When I was going through it, I hated it. I hated it. I hated it. But what it did is sensitize me. It helped me be able to minister to those who will be going through that. And so sometimes when, when things happen, I don't get overexcited because, again, you know, I've been through a lot of stuff. Not saying I haven't been through everything, but I've been through some things that helps me to navigate and to help someone else. Okay? So again, it's that uh, when you're going through things, ask God, okay, God, will you try to teach me in this? Will you try to show me? Because a lot of times God wants to use you, but get in that comfort zone. He wants to take you out of that comfort zone and put you in an uncomfortable position so he can use you and that you could affect someone else's life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yes. You know, when you said that, it, it's true. It's very true in reference to that because <clears throat> when I see a lot of young people today when they get married, it's kind of like I put, I would say, uh oh. You know, because they don't really understand the true meaning of what marriage consists of. Amen. It's Amen. more than saying I do. When you say I do and you walk, you do that, your whole life changes. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be totally different. And you have to respond to each other. You can't, you're going to argue. That's now. <laughs> but you've got to learn to compromise. But not only that, the most important things which I tell a lot of young people is to keep God first. Mm -hmm. Because if Amen. you keep them, no matter what you go through, even if, it, if you end up ending it, he still has you. Mm -hmm. And he'll still pull you through. But going through a lot of stuff, keeping God first, it saved me a lot. Amen. 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 Keeping him number one, That's focusing true. on him, um, having a past that I knew, and it helped a lot. Amen. It helped me understand. I forgot about myself. 
I, I took care of my family, but now I have to live all over again. Mm -hmm. So I have to learn to redo everything all over again because I forgot about myself. Amen. So Amen. it's a lot. You know, you dedicate to your family, but at the same time, you're important. Right. And you got to go on. And you got to, you know, live. So it, it, look, just keep the God first in everything you do is the most important thing because he's your guidance. The Bible, as you said, is he guides you. Right, he guides you. He tells he you when you speak him or not. He tells you when to shut up, go sit down, whatever. Right. And, and that's the right. And, and I try to we listen to the Spirit of God. You know, whenever I don't listen to that small, still voice, I mess yeah. up. You know, it's something like that God, you know, and, and I just, and, and then it's like, why didn't I listen? Mm -hmm. You know, something that the Spirit of God, you know, again, because uh, this morning, I was reading the Bible, I was just getting, I, I had no TV on, and nobody trying to pump me up the Word of God. I was reading the Word, and I was like, Lord have mercy, I, I couldn't put it down. Because again, it, it was feeding me, it was helping me uh, deal with certain issues. Again, so again, you know, it, it, that's important. Now moving on, yes? Yeah, I recently heard a description of, of uh, what the purpose of the Sunday school is. Mm -hmm. And it's marriage is, and uh, a noted Bible teacher said, the, the purpose of marriage is to advance the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's very simple, and that's very powerful. Mm -hmm. And I hope I always remember that. Amen. Amen. And, and again, a lot of times, you know, and, and, and we as parents, we have to teach our children that it's more than Oh, I love you. More yeah. lover. Yeah. yeah. It's more once once you get down to the nitty gritty, mm -hmm. you know, you know, it's more than yeah, love is good, but no, you know, the thing about it, but having Christ in the center, the foremost center of the marriage helps it. It really does. It really does. And people yielding to the spirit. And a lot of people don't do that. Don't yield to the Spirit of God. Okay. Yes, sir. I just I wanted to mention something about imagery. I think, you know, the Scripture says, what a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Right. And I think as a church, we have to understand the imagery and what it portrays right. without saying anything. And, you know, when you look at pictures of Jesus Christ, right, he's Constantine's nephew. That's who it is. Mm -hmm. It's not him. We don't even know what he looks like. Mm -hmm. But even in churches, even here, mm -hmm. we have a, a, a symbol of a man praying, and we tell the kids it's Jesus Christ. It's mm -hmm. not. When you go to a mosque, you go to a, a synagogue, you don't see any images mm -hmm. at all. You go to the Protestant church, you got images all over, and we have them in our home. Mm -hmm. So the first, the first step with a young child, the, the formative years is from first grade to third grade, or when they're born. So the imagery and how we portray ourselves says a lot about the God that we serve. Right. And what we have to understand is that that imagery portrays and we have to diffuse it as a church. Right, right now, if I, if I ask everybody to close their eyes and I paint a picture, I guarantee it will be a negative image. For example, if I say, everybody close your eyes, this is what I want you to imagine. There's four guys sitting on a stoop and they're just hanging out. They're young guys. Right? Just think about that. Close, yeah, I'm not saying do it, but if you thought about that, I guarantee 99% will see a dark image. Will not be a sunny day. Or probably homeboys sitting in the hood. That says a lot about a preconceived notion that's been submitted to us over history. And as a church, we have to curtail that. Because the church is our only salvation in the 21st century of what's happening today. But, but the thing about it is, is that a lot of the imagery is curtailed by one's um, uh, uh, growing up in a family. Because again, again, if you look at some people have a mother and father in the home. Some kids grow up without a dad. They don't know what a man is like. They may have an uncle or, or whatever, but they don't know the function of a man in a household. Uh, some uh, growing up without mothers, okay? So again, the imagery that is portrayed also in the home is more uh, telemount as far as the way a person look at things. Because again, it's that, um, you know, with your description that you gave, 
The only reason why my imagery would be a certain way because I work in a, a correctional institution, okay? And so you see, you know, young boy, but again, and, and, and I'm gonna say this and then we're gonna move on. These young boys came look, you know, with the hoodies and all that and I said, oh Lord, and they were all right. And in my mind, that we, they weren't causing no trouble, they weren't you know, but again, because of what I was used to in the correctional institution that I was working in, you know, uh, one, um, and I'm going to definitely move on from this point, is that uh, a young boy in Camden that was in our program got shot and killed. He was coming from, he worked at Burger King, he uh, got off, he went to the corner store to get something to eat. There was a drive-by, they shot him. He died on the steps of the facility. The person that was the assistant, de direct, uh, assistant deputy director, he confessed this. He said, when I heard it, I thought he was up to no good. But then I realized, then when I heard the whole story, he was just getting off of work, went to get something to eat, it was returned back to the program. And some kids that rode by didn't even know him, shot him, killed him. He lived in Newark. He did not want to go back to Newark. He wanted to stay where the facility was in Camden because he felt safe. He got killed in Camden. Okay, so again, that imagery that the that, that officer was looking at, he had to correct himself because he had a negative response because again, all of our kids end up doing that. But then he had to correct himself because of the truth that came out. You know, so again, so now moving on. <laughs> when David murdered Uriah, in order, it's 942, we almost lost a time. <laughs> Let's say this. <laughs> when David murdered Uriah in order to marry his wife uh, Bathsheba, God declared in 2 Samuel 12, 10, Now therefore the sword shall never depart from thine house, because thou hast despised me and hast taken the wife of Uriah, the Hittite, to be thy wife. Okay? Now we're going to start next week on page 75. Okay? But all your comments were good. All your comments, again, I... I Answer the, the comments or whatever. We may agree, we may disagree. That's fine. That's fine. The only person that is right is God. Amen. Right? Amen. The only person that is right is God, right? Amen. Now then, no, let's talk to comment. The only person that is right is God, right? Yes. Okay, thank you, thank you. And that's the only person that is right. Okay? And that's who we follow, God. Let's follow the word of prayer. Again, page 75. And next week will be, I guess, well, anyway, 75. I'm going to start, okay? Father God, we understand that if it was not you coming into our lives and breaking the bonds of sin, we'll be on our way to a crisis eternity. We want to thank you, God. Yes. We're not looking at who we were. Amen. Amen. But you look past that. Thank you. Thank God, you knew that we would mess up. God, you yeah. knew we would sin. God, you knew we were going to do things that's not right in your eyesight. You knew it, God. But you still saved us. Thank you. Yes. And we can never, ever be grateful enough to know you as Lord and Savior of our lives. We ask, Lord God, to bless the service coming up, Lord God. We pray right now you bless the pastor. We pray right now for those fathers that will be coming and listening. And for fathers that we pray that you would challenge the fathers to be fathers indeed. To help their children to understand who they are. A lot of times a young girl wants to find refuge in their dad. A lot of times a young boy wants to be able to imitate his dad. I pray, Lord God, that we as fathers will not disappoint our children. That God, that we will be the men that you have called us to be. It's not about what we see on TV. It's what we see in the Word of God. How a man should be, how a father should be, and how you want to mold us in that way. So God, we pray right now that you'll bless us, bless the next upcoming service, bless this class. Yeah. 
that you will be glorified. I pray and hope that God, that everyone that was here that's listening in on YouTube will be blessed. That we will find refuge in your word. And that they will cling, they will cling to the word of God. This we pray. If you are saved, we all say amen. 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 See you next week. God bless you all. Thanks again for coming. Amen. All right. They got that figured out. They got that. They got that figured out. They can make you buy some.